Hi there and welcome back to The Dental Advisor. Today we're going to talk about a topic called C-Factor. Now C-Factor is a relatively new entry into dentistry and little is known about the impact it makes except the fact that it makes a pretty good question for Viva during the postgraduate exams. So if you look at dental materials that we have today, silver amalgam, C-Factor is not a problem. Glass enamel restorations, C-Factor is not a problem at all. So why was C-Factor introduced? The C-Factor started coming into play only after the introduction of bonded restorations. Now if you look at the definition of C-Factor, any textbook will tell you that it is the ratio of bonded surfaces to unbonded surfaces. Now today the percentage of composite restorations far outnumbers both glass enema as well as amalgam restorations. So therefore, C factor is important for us to understand because we are doing so many composite restorations. It's only a ratio. It's the number of bonded surfaces to unbonded surfaces. So why is it clinically relevant? It becomes clinically relevant when you understand something called polymerization shrinkage shred. Polymer, pol, polymerization shrinkage stress. Polymerization shrinkage stress. There's a lot of stress in even just saying that. Polymerization shrinkage stress. What is it? It is the forces that are exerted on the walls of the cavity as the composite is shrinking. And where do these forces go? They get trapped within each composite layer. So if you're layering two millimeters after two millimeters after two millimeters, these polymerization shrinkage stresses, these forces are getting accumulated and they're getting trapped within each of these layers. So what is the relationship between say C factor and shrinkage stress? Very simple, greater the C factor, greater the shrinkage stress. So which cavities have a high C factor? the class 1. You take this off, it becomes a class 2. You put it sideways, it becomes a class 3. You put it in the front face of the tooth, it becomes a class 5. All these restorations have a high C factor. The class 1 has a C factor of 4. You're looking at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 bonded surfaces and one unbonded surface which means it's five. My maths is terrible. The class two is one, two, three, four, five, six, as opposed to two, so it becomes around four. The class three is like this. Instead of, uh, it's more like a triangle over here. So you get a C factor of around about three. And a class five is again a class one sitting on the side face of a tooth. So you get a, C factor of 5. So the worst cavities are your class 1 and your class 5 if you look at it from the C factor point of view. In a cavity like a class 1, if you fill it up and you cure it, then there's going to be micro debonding which occurs on one or more of these walls. So what steps have been suggested to overcome this polymerization shrinkage stress? One is using a flowable resin layer first. Uh, the second is slow start curing or ramp curing or pulse curing. And the other one which is most common which is layering two millimeters at a time. Now evidence suggests that none of these work. None of these truly work. No, soft start doesn't really work. Layering two millimeters at a time doesn't really reduce polymerization shrinkage that much. As well as, uh, what did I say first, putting down a a flowable composite resin layer first, probably the worst idea to do because a flowable composite shrinks much, much more than a packable composite. So the resultant stress is much higher actually. So what is the solution? How can you reduce your polymerization shrinkage stress? The answer is really simple. We've been looking at it the other way around all this time. Make it a class four design. Now the class four design has only one surface that you're bonding to and everything else is unbonded. So your C factor gets reduced to about 0.5 or even less. And that is ideal for composite restorations. 
You change your cavity design and make all your cavities look like a class 4 design. This I probably explain in subsequent videos how you can convert a class 2 or a class 3 or a, or a class 5 into a class 4 design. When you do that, you reduce C factor, you reduce shrinkage stress, you reduce post-operative sensitivity. So there you have it. I hope you've understood C factor, shrinkage stress and the role they play in modern composite dentistry today. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Goodbye.